Okay, sorry. Thank you for listening. This is Kaylee Ann Nomi. Welcome to um, part two of my reintroduction of who I am. So, my parents made a very big point of making sure that I knew that my disability was not to limit who I was. It was I was not to allow my disability to take to make I mean for instance like you know they they hardly ever did anything for me like I had to learn how to get dressed and I just had to be independent um, because they weren't going to allow they weren't going to baby me and I appreciate that I mean I think that's a a great trait uh, for parents to take on that role and not allow their children to be babied um and to be independent. Um, when my parents got divorced in 92 and my mom moved us, um, you know what, hold on, sorry. I have an itch in my eye. Anyway, so when my parents got divorced and my mom moved to Minnesota in 92, um, she went through a heart transplant. Um, I think in 93 or 94, um, and that's, and so, um, we, she didn't know, you know, didn't have a lot of friends up here, um, and sort of wanted to have us connect with people that could help support us while she was, you know, recuperating from a heart transplant. And so I got in touch with the United uh, United Cerebral Palsy Organization, UCP, and uh, they had a kids program um, that you would go and, I don't know, there was a golf tournament. You wouldn't participate in the golf tournament. You would just watch the golf tournament. But um, anyway, and some other activities. But anyway, I just remember feeling... Like, I was nothing like these kids. Um, I just, I, I became very, I was never very aware of my disability. Never. I, I don't remember thinking, oh boy, I have a disability and I can't do all this stuff and woes me and, you know, things like that. I don't ever remember thinking that. But, I do remember going to that type of event and thinking, Wow. That's how people look at me. You know, and it sort of was like a wake up call, like, I don't know. But it also made me realize that I, I was uncomfortable being amongst people with disabilities. Um, just because I never thought of myself with a person with disabilities. And so. <clears throat> I don't know. I and even to this day I am comfortable with people with physical disabilities. Um anyway, so I have a lot of able body friends, um by choice, um and not very many disabled friends by choice. Anyway, um Anyway, so Partners in Policy Making has sort of brought me back into that disability um, concept. Um, and anyway, there was two people on that council or on, in that program that I've gotten to really like and appreciate their opinions. And uh, I think I'm, I'm starting to notice myself, I'm, I'm starting to recognize that if I meet people who have disabilities, and they're and they're outgoing like me, and they're um, they themselves aren't oh poor me, I have a disability, you know that kind of thing. If they're not woe is just me, I don't look. I appreciate them. I like them. Um, they don't make me uncomfortable. It's the people who sit there and just I don't know. If, have this pity party outlook in life that I feel uncomfortable around because really life is what you make it and if you want to be 
if you want to have a pity party, that's fine. I just, I'm just not going to feed into that. I'm not going to, I mean, I friended people and then realized that they are pity party people and they, they find themselves not talking to me very long. So anyway, um, and that goes for people that have disabilities and people who don't have disabilities. Um, but you know what? In my eyes, everybody has a disability of some sort. Either that being stupidity, ignorance, um, a physical disability, a mental health disability. You know, people people are born with disabilities. Some, just some people are more accepted than others. Um, and that's unfortunate. It's, it's an unfortunate situation. But, um... I'm very blessed that I found um, that I was never felt to be made. I I never felt like like I needed a pity party because of my disability. Now, I I will admit when I'm pregnant, I'm pretty much in misery. I don't like. I mean, I like the process of getting pregnant and I like having the baby or the child but I don't like the between part um anyway so and I, I think there are people with able bodies and, and people with non-able bodies that can agree you know in, in that term so anyway I'm gonna check the time okay I'm good on time um so yeah um so I don't think of myself as a person with disabilities, but I also think of myself as somebody who can be a good spokes well, it's not spokesperson, but a good person to, um, I want, we were asked this weekend, I had policies, partners in policy making this weekend, and we were asked what we wanted to do, um, you know, with our, with our lives, and I came to the conclusion, and I've sort of been teetering on this conclusion for about four years now, uh, five years maybe, um, about public speaking. And uh, I guess that's why I started the face, uh, the YouTube video um, to begin with, um, was to see if I had enough gumption um, to be a public speaker. Uh, you know, things like that. Um, so, I think I'm going to pursue being a public speaker um, about, dis about, you know, disability-related uh, life. Um, but, anyway, uh, so, so that's how that happened. Um, so I, I, I don't mean to offend people uh, in my video, um, but I also mean to be honest and forthcoming. Um, and that's just, you know, I'm... It's just how my parents raised me. It was just the, the circumstances of uh, my life and I've grown to accept it and I hope you can accept me for for who I am um, I I really